Hello, my name is Michael Prom, Applications Engineer for Applied Engineering. This video shows the new feature functionality of Sheet Metal in Inventor 2010. I'm going to start off by creating a new Sheet Metal component, and in this component, I'm going to create a new sketch. Now, I'm creating the sketch to create a profile that I'm going to use to do my new contour roll. Now, once I have a profile sketched out here, I'm going to come in and start adding some dimensions to this. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're adding dimensions is that you don't necessarily have to have it fully constrained or fully black as you see here, um, but it is a good practice to have when you're creating any sort of uh, geometry that's used for sheet metal. Now before I finish this sketch, I'm going to actually add in a center line that's going to be used as an axis for my roll. Once this axis is dimensioned, I can actually exit the sketch and take a look at this new feature in Inventor Sheet Metal. So you can see in my sheet metal tab, I have a new contour roll tab that allows me, as you can see here, to create a contour roll off an axis and a sketch. So I'm just going to see a couple different angle options. And once I have that done, I want to continue building up um, my sheet metal component here. One thing a lot of people don't know about is that you can actually create sheet metal component using some of your regular extrude tools. So what I'm doing here is just creating a regular sketch actually going to project the geometry of this outside edge so I don't have to do any um, any sort of line creation and once I have my sketch created you'll see I can go back into my model tab and actually use my extrude tool um, this can be done because I have the constant thickness for my sheet metal component so this can be done um, in any other way as long as you have the actual thickness for the sheet metal part used when you do extrude I'm just going to add a dimension here to extrude out my part and now we're going to take a look at uh, some new functionality with the unfold feature. So I can come in and unfold this roll. And once I have my roll unfolded, I'm actually going to come and unfold the, the lower lip. Now this is important because we could always do cuts across a sheet metal fold before, but I, I could never do any sort of uh, punch feature or anything like that. So in this case, I actually want to add a new punch and uh, I'm just going to create a basic sketch here and add some points to the sketch that can be used for my punch feature. So I'm just going to add in about four, four points and then come back in and uh, dimension out these points. Now, once I have all these dimensions in here, I can actually exit all my sketch and take a look at my punch, um, my new punch tool. What this punch tool recognizes those points I put in there and uh, these punch features are something that you can create yourself. Uh, any standard cut, um, a lot of people think punches are normally used just for louvers but you can actually use them for keyways as you see here. And uh, when I have this completed, I'm actually going to refold this component. So there's one option I have available to me is just uh, to select the refold tool. Or I have a section, second option here of going in my design tree and uh, selecting the refold option. Now, once I have my component done, uh, I have some new functionality built into my flat pattern. The first being, you can see my holes are on the bottom. Um, I can actually select now where I want this to unfold from. So if I change my unfold point, and select OK. It's actually going to refold this in a different manner. Uh, you can see I have options there as my, my punches and my angles as well. So by changing where I'm unfolding this from, you can see the different view in this. And uh, I also have options now of changing my Benor annotations. Um, I can even come in and override these. I'm just going to drive from the top to bottom. A new order, or uh, you can see the glyphs turn green when they're changed. I can actually um, manually add different numbers to this as well. Now with my uh, bend order complete, I actually want to go and open up a new draw, or a drawing that I've created for this. Now in this drawing, um, I have left out the dimension here for this bend line. And what I want to do is just come in and add this new dimension. Uh, the one thing that you'll notice is that when I come back in, uh, it's not going to be gapped properly. So there's a new tool called a range that allows me to select all my dimensions and then it automatically re-puts the, the gaps in there 
So I have a properly spaced dimensioned drawing. Now along with this on my drawings, I actually have a new table I can add here that actually brings over all that bend order information. And zoom in here, you can see that all my bend orders come over and uh, this information comes from that bend uh, annotation button that I just had earlier. One last thing you can do uh, that's new to Inventor 2010 is uh, change the dimensions. So I have just a standard millimeter dimension here and uh, what I want to do now is in my styles options I can change this dimension from just a regular millimeter to a multi-dimension um, where I have both inches and millimeters. So I don't have to redo the drawing, I can actually just put multiple dimensions uh, or multiple standards for the dimensions on one drawing. Now I'm just going to close out of this and uh, create another sheet metal component here. I'm actually going to do uh, a lofted uh, sheet metal component. Now this is something that I've been able to do before, but in order to do this there was a lot of workarounds. Um, I had to create actual Excel spreadsheets to derive this from. Uh, the biggest problem is when you have a circle and you have a square um, to do a loft for sheet metal. You know, either it's rolled or if it's actually bent using a uh, press machine, uh, it's not an actual circle, it's, it's more of an octagon or how many, um, depending on how many shapes you have. So what I can do now, as you can see as I'm sketching up this part, is basically do my, my circle, my square, and I'm doing this because this is a little more of a, an extreme example of um, doing some laughs. And uh, with my, my circle and square here, once I have this mated down and dimensioned properly, I can come in and add a new um, loft sheet metal component by using my loft tool. So instead of having to do any sort of work around uh, in sheet metal with that loft tool it recognizes that there's an actual circle and a square and that there's going to have to be um, some breaks or bends put in here. Now, along with this you can see I, I use my break option there's also an option here for doing a rolled edge. Um, this would be more if you want to die for a finished product and maybe I want to start off with a, a more of a bent um, option just for some design and maybe a, a prototype. You can see I have glyphs on each one of these corners so I can edit each corner separately. Uh, I knock this down to just two bends and once it's okay you can see I have a solid completed lofted flange. Now the one problem with this is since I have a solid component at the, there's nowhere for this sheet metal part to unfold. So what they've done is added a new rip tool. So I'm just going to create a basic sketch here of what, where I want my rip to go. Um, all I need is basically a point and a face uh, to select. And with my sketch completed, I can just come in and grab my new rip tool, select my face and point, and I'm going to add a gap right in there to cut. Now I'm going to exaggerate this uh, just so you can see the options a little bit more. And then now I can come in with my flatten pattern, and I'm now able to do very quickly, easily, uh, a new sheet metal lofted um, squared around part.